Coming up on Community Central, up close and personal with Dr. Francina Williams, and find out why everyone is talking about the George Washington Carver Interpretive Museum. This building has its own history. It has it, history in its architecture, if you will. First of all, it was the first Greyhound bus station in Dothan. And if you look at the rendering, you will see the bus, sta the bus actually loading there. The building carries another very important history. And it's an example of how architecture can actually capture history. This building was constructed during the segregation era in the South. As you know, segregation was a legal status in the South, and all public facilities were required to accommodate separation of the races. Consequently, this building was constructed to accommodate separation of races by the two separate entrances reflected in the building. It also has two separate sets of restrooms, again, a reflection of that era. And there are many individuals who enter this building who can relate personally to having used the services under those circumstances, both black and white. Uh, this mural is titled The Gift of Prosperity. It was painted by a local black artist, Mr. Keith Newby, and it was intended, commissioned in fact, to portray the impact of Dr. Carver's gift to this area the industrial and economic impact in this area. And you see it reflected in the way that he moves us from the cotton fields, which had been the main crop at that time, into the peanut industry and looking at his lab as a source of uh, information and discovery. And he shows that because he transformed the agricultural base, he thereby transformed the economic base. And that led to industrial growth. You had businesses uh, growing out of that, all kinds of products coming out of that. And it affected real estate in this area, for example. In 1900, real estate in the Wiregrass area, according to Somersell in Alabama history, was selling for from 50 cents to 150 per acre. Uh, this exhibit actually displays some selected um, inventors and scientists, all of them, however, have made contributions that have affected our lives. I want to emphasize the fact that they have changed the lives of all Americans. Elijah McCoy is the person who developed the process for lubricating machinery. It was known as the drip cup. Up to that point, industrialists had to stop the machinery, oil it, and then crank it. And they had people walking around with cans who did just that. Production, of course, was obviously slowed down by that process. McCoy developed a process that would automatically drip oil into the machinery, eliminating the need to stop it and crank it. Granville T. Woods is the person who developed the entire electrical system for the railroad industry. It's important to understand that. He is the one who developed the process for allowing trains to communicate from train to train, avoiding collisions and so forth. He also developed the concept of the third rail, which is the basis for the monorail and the subway. Now, when we're talking about major inventions, it doesn't get any stronger than that. And then we talk here about Garrett Morgan. And what did he do? He developed the traffic signal and the gas mask, two major changes of our culture. Rouleau is the person who is um, the person who invented the process for refining sugar. And he was a chem um, an engineer who adapted it, the condensation process, so that uh, sugar refinery. There are those dietitians who might criticize that, but most of us who enjoy sweets, of course, appreciate it. And then we have here Frederick Jones. This is a man, when you are eating uh, from the global market, if you will, this is the man who made it possible because he developed the refrigerated truck first that was adapted to trains and airplanes so that 
perishable goods could be transported, uh, transported safely. And this, of course, involves medical supplies. And this is Louis Latimer. Louis Latimer is the person who worked with uh, Thomas Edison, actually a member of that team. And he is the one who developed the filament, the wire that causes bulbs to burn. That was his invention. But he is also a person who set up the first electrical system in this country and in, in England. In New York City, he, he was the person who installed the first electrical system and, as I've said again, in London, uh, England. Uh, he also drew the blueprints that were actually submitted to the uh, patent office for Alexander Graham Bell. They were actually his drawings. Louis Latimer is the person who revolutionized the shoe industry. He, when he moved to um, Massachusetts, he was aware of the fact that it was a very costly process to connect the top of the shoe to the sole that was known as lasting. And it was expensive and slow. He studied it and developed a process that was so complicated that the U.S. Patent Office had to send representatives over there for him to explain the uh, drawings. Uh, he was granted the patent and sold that patent to the U.S. shoe company. And Massachusetts then became uh, the uh, shoe capital of the world. These are people, as you've noticed, that, I've changed, uh, that have changed our entire world. But I want to point out a couple of our scientists here, please. Richard uh, Sykes here, too. This is the one who actually developed the automatic gear shift, which is uh, a boon to anyone driving now, I think. But we want to also express um, appreciation for Dr. Charles Drew. Dr. Charles Drew is the person who developed the process for separating blood, whole blood, and, and extracting the plasma and storing it. The whole process of being able to have blood stored transformed the whole medical world. Think about it. Imagine surgery now without blood transfusions available. You see, until he did that, the only way you could get a transfusion was from person to person. It meant a lengthy searching for someone whose blood would match yours, and then it had to be done person to person. This ruled out mass transfusions, you see. Uh, the kind of catastrophes that we often encounter now where you need hundreds of thousands of people and you've got the blood stored and you can just pull it out and it's marked. All of that is his invention. He actually established the first Red Cross blood bank and managed it. This is Dr. Ernest Justin. Of course, he is the person who uh, actually pioneered in cellular uh, investigations. And he laid the groundwork for uh, birth control pills, for uh, in vitro fertilization, artificial insemination, and transformed the scientific world again there because so much is done in that uh, method. And this is Dr. Daniel Williams, Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. And he is the person who developed the process, well, actually the first successful open heart surgery was performed by him. Dr. Patricia Bath is the person who developed laser eye surgery. This is Benjamin Banneker. He was actually born during slavery, but was born a free person. And during that period, however, exhibited such uh, miraculous knowledge that he astounded people who encountered him. He became uh, an astronomer. Uh, he became um, a surveyor and a mathematician. He was one of three men selected by George Washington during his presidency to lay out the city of Washington, D.C. And then this is Dr. Lloyd Hall, and he is the person who actually developed the whole process for preserving foods commercially and medical supplies, protecting them. Uh, he set up the standards and all for, for, uh, for sterilizing and uh, preserving all kinds of commercial goods and so forth. Um, and in the process, transform the way that we handle all of our commercial products. I think we need him back with some of the problems we're having lately. But, and then we give tribute to some of our uh, early explorers who tend not to be recognized, even though the government has finally recognized, for example, Matthew Henson, who actually accompanied Byrd to the pole. And he is the person who actually placed the flag on the pole. He was the person who was able to communicate with the natives. And the person, as I've said again, who was uh, physically able to make it up to the pole itself. This is um, DuSable, um, 
who was the person that discovered, uh, well, established, I can't say discovered, he established the first settlement that became Chicago. This is uh, James Beckworth, or Jim Beckworth, and he was one of the many black mountain men. We don't usually see those in the movies, but there were many of them. One of the reasons is because the West was a good place to hide. The other is because the Native Americans were much more receptive to blacks than they were to other Europeans, and consequently, uh, he was successful. In fact, he is the one who discovered the pass through the Sierra, uh, Sierra Nevada mountains that allowed the settlers to actually move over into California and settle it. Community Central.